Hi, it's Bruce. It's Sunday, April 11th. Uh, I had uh, four segments planned. I taped one and it was just too long. I didn't realize I was saying four things. So I'm going to try to do a summarization of all the four things in one take today. So let's get going. Uh, this is a very busy week and it started last weekend with the all-day Orphan's Home Cycle. Now, I'm not a big Horton Foot fan. Uh, he's fine. Sometimes I like his place, sometimes I don't. And uh, this was nine Horton Foot one-hour plays that started at 11 in the morning and went to 11 at night uh, with a dinner break and lunch break. And actually, it was quite a great day. It's uh, directed by Michael Wilson, and uh, it has a cast of 22. I'll just mention five of my favorites. Bill Heck, who played uh, the lead horse, Ro 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 Robido, uh, after he grows up, two kids play him first. Uh, Hallie Foote, James DeMars, Pamela Payton Wright, and Anna Lee Jeffries. What a cast, and it was so great experiencing this uh, Horton Foot cycle. It goes from uh, 1902 or so to 1928 or so, and if you're into these marathon things, I, don't, I think it's over now. I think this weekend might have been the last weekend for a marathon. You can see three separate episodes, if you'd like to, during the week. And uh, there was rumors that this may move to Broadway next year, but I'm not sure how big of a popular success this would be. But that they could sell the uh, complete cycles to some theater, freaky theater friends, uh, fans, who like to sit through 12 hours in a day, like I do. Uh, it, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience, and uh, and I actually liked Horton Foote's writing in this. So, congratulations. Uh, sorry Horton uh, is no longer with us, but this is a great success for him um, posthumously. Oh, I'm just going to stop the camera. I don't have to. Okay, the next thing I did was go out on a Tuesday night to see Come Fly Away. I was very excited about Come Fly Away because... I'm a big fan of Twilight Tharp, loved moving out, saw it three times. But the one reason I wanted to see this was to see John Celia, who I saw once in Moving Out, and then the next two times I went to see Moving Out, he wasn't in it. Well, the understudy gods were not in my favor. I went early in the run because I knew he did most of the performances except two, and I get in and on the understudy board is that John Celia is not dancing tonight. I had a heavy heart through the entire evening. Uh, the only thing that slightly lifted it was Cody Green was doing John Celia's part. Cody Green won this reality competition dance show a couple years ago called Step It Up Can Dance. Step It Up and Dance, which Jerry Mitchell uh, uh, hosted. Cody Green's a great uh, dancer. Uh, he was criticized on this TV show for not having um, characters acting as much and, and just being this great physical dancer. And you know, I think he still has that problem a little. I, I never got, I never felt Cody Green, but boy, is he a great dancer. Uh, two other people I loved in it, Kareen uh, Plantedy and Charlie Nesheba Hodges. Uh, great dancing, it's all the Frank Sinatra music, it's mostly a dance concert. So if you're going to see a plot, it's not there. She tries to put a plot about men and women meeting in a nightclub and, you know, the ups and downs and then staying all night in their pajamas and shirtless, which is very cute, but I don't know what kind of dance club this is. Uh, I love the choreography. I think it's beautiful. I love the music. I had a great time, except I didn't see John Celia. Um, if you want to see a two-hour dance concert of Twilight Tharp, uh, it's a really wonderful piece to see. If you don't want a dance concert for two hours on Broadway, then don't see this. What can I say? It's one of those things. Okay. Uh, the next thing I saw was Anyone Can Whistle at City Centers on a Friday night, thanks to my good friend Jim, who um, arranged to get me some tickets because it was like a sold-out hot mess to get into and we couldn't even touch it. Okay, Anyone Can Whistle is very, very, very dear to my heart. I was 16 when it opened in 1964, and I had the original cast album, and it was one of the greatest scores I ever heard, even though it only ran nine performances <coughs> back then. 
Angela Lansbury, Lee Remick, and Harry Guardino, and I used to carry the lyrics of With So Little To Be Sure Of typed up in my wallet. I was an Anyone Can Whistle fan. So this was something that I did not want to miss. Because Donna Murphy played the Angela Lansbury role, um, Sutton Foster played the Lee Remick role, and Raul Esparza played the Harry Guardina role, and these are three of the top, top Broadway musical talents that we have. Donna Murphy was spectacular. She just was, was amazing. Um, as were Sutton Foster and Raul Esparza, and I sat there like a blubbering idiot through with so little to be sure of. Now, Anyone Can Whistle is not a great show as a whole. It has a horrible book by Arthur Lawrence, and I have to give David Ives credit for concert adaptizing this, adapting it, and uh, Casey Nikoloff for making this look like a tremendous Broadway musical. And I'll tell you, I love the music to this. And you can't get three better voices, three better actors, and I, I, it was a joy to watch this show that a really, really, really flawed, precious jewel of theater history with Donna Murphy, Sutton Foster, and Raul Esparza. Uh, it was funny. The plot is crazy. makes no sense. And, uh, you know, it's about who's insane and who isn't and very 60s. Um, but I'll tell you, this was something that I'm glad I, I lived to see. So that's high praise indeed. Okay, another thing I'm glad I saw was yesterday, Promises, Promises, which was one of my favorite musicals. I love the score, still listen to it. And this stars, it's a revival directed by Rob Ashford and choreographed by Rob Ashford. And this is a showcase for Sean Hayes, who's a major Broadway star now. He just is perfect as Chuck uh, C.C. Baxter. Uh, he gets all the laughs. He sings quite well. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth is also in this, and she has great stage presence, and she's a very good actress. She's kind of miscast as Fran. I think she doesn't really quite have the uh, vulnerability, and she's a uh, Fran, I think, should be early 20s, and Kristen's a little bit. But you know what? After she was on stage for a while, I quite forgave her, and she was she was good, but it's Sean Hayes', it's Sean Hayes show. And Katie Finnerton plays the small part of the uh, pickup in the bar. I am not a pickup. <laughs> and if she, I would say if she doesn't win the Tony, I'd be very much surprised, except I think Angela Lansbury from Little Night Music will be up against her. And in that case, Katie Finnerton will not win the Tony. Tony, speaking of Tonys, Tony Gold, Goldwyn, who I always thought was a great hot actor, plays the, uh, the very bad Mr. Sheldrake who manipulates Fran. And uh, all in all, this show was quite, quite fun. The audience ate it up, and the audience loved Sean Hayes. Um, but one was a little disappointment, because I love the choreography and the costumes. Uh, the set could be a little bit better. I think it's a little minimal, but, you know, I think the expense. And uh, Tricky Lurky Time does not measure up to Michael Bennett's original Tricky Lurky Time. However, it was fun to hear Tricky Lurky Time. Anyway, Sean Hayes is the reason to see this. He's stunning, and I hope, hope, hope he wins the Tony. Uh, once again, I haven't seen a show that I've been disappointed with in a while since a miracle worker, and I liked to love all of the four shows. Another great time in the theater, and I'm seeing three shows next weekend. I need a vacation. Bye.